as Guru Nanak started traveling a lot, there are three key messages that he gave to the world. He was a very practical being, very practical man. A householder, had family, sometime in between had also work, business, jobs to attend, fields to attend. So he was a he was a person like all of us, living in the world with all its forces of responsibilities or what not, compulsions. He looked at the man, he looked at people and he observed that, okay, what's going on? Though his message was Ik Omkar, the eternal oneness, but he realized, he, looking around, that people live in the world of duality. We all live in the world of duality. Our experiences of duality, I and you, this is our this is our real experience right now. He looked at this and he said, okay, how, how can we take people from this zone of duality to the Ikkomkar, the eternal oneness, the, etern the truth of eternal oneness? Then he observed people and he realized that people are engaged in doing. We are doing people. This is, this is important. He observed that we all do things, you and I, we all do things. We, I'm doing this satsang, if it's doing. We're all doing things. So look at two profound things here. A, we're established in duality, which means separateness, separate self. I am separate self. First interesting point. The second interesting point that I'm doing, constantly doing things in life. Okay. Look at the phenomena here. I'm a separate ego self and I'm constantly engaged in doing. What would my doing produce? <laughs> what would my doing strengthen? My doing will strengthen the I more. Do you follow? So if I'm a, you know, even if I go to temple and start to do prayer three times a day, I am doing the prayer. <laughs> so even doing the prayer strengthen my I-ness. And the I-ness is based on the sense of separation, sense of duality. You are separate than me. The more doing I do, the more strengthen this separation becomes. Do you follow? The more doing that I do, it strengthens my sense of separation, my I-ness more. Yeah? Observe, contemplate, look at your own lives. This is how it happens. Maybe the I becomes a little more subtle when we walk the, the spiritual path, so to say. But all the doing, I am meditating, I am doing yoga, <laughs> all of that. The I, the separateness, the I sense gets stronger the more I do. There is a direct correlation. More doing means more strengthening the I-ness, the separate self. Many masters talked about non-doing. My, one of my beloved master, even Osho, talked about just being, non-doing. We didn't understand what he's saying. We didn't interpret it correctly. Many masters said about non-doing. Yeah. The whole philosophy of Taoism, Lao Tzu, is like that. But when we hear non-doing, we think non-doing the activity. The moment we hear non-doing, we become non-doers, <laughs> we become lazy, the tamas takes over because we've heard master says non-doing, because doing strengthens the separate self, the sense of separate selves, 
itself. So you say non-doing. And then that non-doing makes us lazy. Is this what non-doing masters were talking about? No. That's what Guru Nanak caught. He understood that the moment I talk about non-doing, people will become lazy. <laughs> and if they continue to do, it strengthens their separate ego self. What's the way out? He gave the first formula. He gave three formulas. He gave the first formula in Punjabi, the formula we say, Kirat Karo. <laughs> it's been interpreted in many different ways. Follow the thread. Follow the thread of what we're talking about. Kirat Karo translates into do your karma. Act. If the action is needed, act. Kirat Karo. Literally, do your action. Do your prescribed duty. These are all the interpretations of Kirat Karo. Just follow the thread. This is very subtle. If you get it, it can transform something in you. So the, the thread that we are following, we are in the world of duality. The more doing that you, I do, it strengthens the sense of separate ego self in me. The moment I hear non-doing, I become lazy. The tamas, the tamasic forces take over. Nanak Sahib says, Kirat Karo, do your action. Here is the sutra, the first pillar of Nanak Sahib's teaching. He says, Kirat Karo, do your action. How? How is most important here? What does it mean? How I act? Then he says, even Krishna says that to Arjuna in the great story of Mahabharata, Arjuna, do your karma, but offer it to me. Don't be the doer. The sense of doership is the problem, not the doing. That's where the magic is. Kirat karo. Do your action, but not from the sense of doership. Do the action. Do not get attached to your action. And do not do your action just for your self-gain. Krishna says to Arjuna, offer your action to me. And be detached from the fruit of this action. Right? Difficult for us. Difficult for us to not be attached to the fruit of the action. We want to do kirat, we want to do action, we want the fruit also. <laughs> Difficult. Nanak made it little more easier. Little more easier, Nanak made. Nanak says, I understand you are in the world of duality. If you have to exist in the world of duality, all right, exist there but exist there as just a servant to the existence. Let existence be your master, serve your master. A beautiful word Nanak uses many times throughout his teaching is hukam, command, divine will. He says, do everything as per the hukam, as per the command, as per the divine will. Be in the surrender. Even Ramakrishna Paramahansa says this. A great bhakta, Ramakrishna says, you have to act in the world. That's how the nature of life is. But when you act in the world, act as a servant, act like a dasa. When you're a servant, you do not own anything. You do not own the action, you do not own the result of the action. You're just nimittaman. You're just doing it. You're just doing it because that's the will of the universe. 
that's the will of the universe the attitude that i am just a das i'm just a servant in any case everything is taken care of friends in any case you're not breathing for yourself it's happening in any case you're not doing anything to digest your food it's happening i heard a very beautiful story there is a there is a very rich king king means rich of course <laughs> he's in his car he's driving it's summer very hot indian summer and he's driving through a, a village and he say, sees a old man old villager in the in the harsh sun carrying a big load of stuff on his head and and walking king look at the king looks at this this poor old man offers him a ride out of compassion poor old man gets into the car wagon whatever that is takes the stuff out of his head keeps on his lap it's very heavy stuff that he's carrying keeps on his lap king is is driving the car kings look at this uh, poor old man says sir why are you still holding this heavy baggage why don't you put it in the boot and sit comfortably this old poor man says no sir how can i do that you have been so kind to offer me lift i can't put all my all my baggage all my weight on the car i want to save the car <laughs> i don't want to put all my weight on the car hence i'm holding this weight on myself separate ego self who thinks that i am carrying my own load no no car is carrying your load you keep it on your head you keep it on your lap you keep it on the boot it does not really matter the car is carrying the load car is existence here we are the villager king is the master the guru load is our emotional baggage <laughs> or our doing doership <laughs> that's the load so nanak says kirat karo do your karma don't own it do your karma as service even if you're a family man you're doing something for the family do it as a service service is a beautiful word very beautiful word very few english words i love so much service i really love this word because the root of service is in the servant they connected the language the word itself is saying that you're a servant to do service and when you are doing the service as a servant you don't need to own it you don't need to be entangled with it you don't to be need to be attached with it let the master take care of it in any case master is taking care of it isn't it look at the house help if you have any when the house help does not come in any case the master of the house which means you in this case you do take care of the house it's your house right do you do you understand the analogy here the master of this house is this existence existence is the master of this house called earth let's say this house called universe the master is taking care of the universe yeah whatever needs to be done kirat karo whatever needs to be done please do it but in the attitude of service the moment you do something with the attitude of service the ego is not getting strengthened with that act that's the that's the that's the sutra here 
the moment there is an attitude of a servant whatever now you do it won't strengthen the ego because you're not owning your action that does not mean you're not responsible for it you are but you're not owning it there is no sense of i am doing it it's very important i am you know if i don't go to work you know the whole world will collapse mm-hmm.